With Halloween fast approaching, I got a window up front that seems a little bare. First thing I did was get the blinds off. I want to open it up for this project. Next, I want to take from Dollar Tree some black foam board. What I'm going to do is put all of this all over the window. Now, I only need it in sections where I'm going to outline or draw for the window sketch. In the middle, where my biggest project is going to go, I'm going to go ahead and double up. Between the foam boards, if they're together, you want to make sure you tape the seams. That way it comes down together. This foam board is just not tall enough, so I had to add a little bit of an extra section for the witch's hat right there. I'm also going to cover up every little square that I want some of my sketch to go. So I'm going to cover both sides, top and bottom. I also want to make sure that I cover the top window because I got a little surprise I want to add in there. Once I get everything in place that I need it, I'm going to turn on my projector. Not all of us are great artists, so I'm going to use this projector as a little bit of a cheat. I went on the internet and used one of my favorite search engines to do any searching for Halloween, silhouette, pumpkins, anything that's scary but easy to sketch out. There's plenty to choose from. In fact, there's thousands. Especially on this witch, I want to make sure I get the pointy nose, and I loved how it was doing the cauldron. You can use your projector to go in, out, make it any size you want. Once you got it all lined out, go ahead and take the foam board off and then we've got to cut it. I went ahead and put some cardboard underneath so I don't cut through the table and then I use an X-Acto knife. Give it a firm press and cut out all along the lines. Don't try to do too much at a time and go slow. You want to make sure that you're not going to cut your hands or anything, especially on these lines like these whiskers. You want to be very delicate so that you don't cut through. I'm going to go ahead and just go through all of the outlines right there. This is an easier sketch than some. The more complicated, yeah, it's going to look good in your window. But you're not there to overwhelm. We just want to greet all those trick-or-treaters when they come up. Once you get it all cut out, go ahead and slice a few extra sections at a time. That way you're not trying to pop out too much. Go ahead and cut littler strips and you can pull those out. Now. When it comes time to the tape that you put on the seam, no worries. Just go ahead and cut straight through that also. It will just come right out. Once you get it all cut out and it's looking good, turn it over. And I use a black electrical tape on the other side of the seam that will be facing the outside. That way it holds it together. Put the silhouette back up in the window. And here's the catch. How are you going to set it to the window? We're going to take some of that black electrical tape, fold it over on itself, and put it against the window and the foam board and press it together. Now it's time for the orange lights. Take those, unravel them, and we're going to go up and down the back side of the silhouette. We don't want the lights to show, but what you can do, make sure they're close to the outside without sticking over. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You're going to get a magical glow no matter what. It's going to look great. I put the shutters back up. Here we go. It lights up beautiful. And at the top, I went ahead and added a bat with a different color. This silhouette just turned out amazing with our big window in the front. All those trick-or-treaters that are coming up, getting treats are gonna be greeted by this wonderful art display. And the great thing about it is you can save it for next year. Project, you're going to need some poster board in a variety of colors of your choice and what we're going to do is we're going to measure out and mark 7.3 inches on each side once I get those marks done I'm going to go ahead and match up my lines on either side next I'm going to be cutting these lines out now we're gonna line up the sections and attach them so that three strips become one long strip. And you can either choose to tape them as I'm going to do, or you could layer them over and hot glue them or just use regular school glue. So it's really up to you. So it's all vertical and now we're gonna work on the top and the bottom ends of the poster board. So we're going to focus on the top and the bottom. They're going to be the same for me and you can use a lot of different things. But for this first one, I'm just going to measure out some ribbon and 
and go ahead and cut it. And I'm gonna do three pieces of ribbon for the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead. All right, I'll save these three for the bottom and we're gonna focus on the top. So I'm gonna space them out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my hot glue gun and I'm just gonna put a dab of glue on one side, stick that down and then add another glue dab on the other side and stick that down. So there's a lot of ways to do this next step, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting some hot glue on the top here, like this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stick some paracord right here in the hot glue, and then we'll wait for it to cool. Next, I'm gonna add more hot glue, and I'm gonna continue the letters and let this cool. So here's a quick look at the words for this one. And we'll go ahead and make one more really quick and then I'll show you what we're doing with these. Here's all four of them and we're all ready to put them up on my door. So now it's time to put them on the door and we're just gonna use some good old tape. And so I'm gonna reach up, I'm gonna put the tape on top Make sure to go around your door handle, but I'll be taping it on the top and the bottom. And if I need some side, I'll put some side on it. And I'm gonna get all four of these up here. Here's my bookshelf door, and I'm thrilled with how they turned out. I hope this inspires you to decorate your door for Halloween too. Lay the drop cloth out and place the branches and sticks on top so that they poke out around the edges like they might in a real fire. Place the string lights on top, covering the surface where the faux fire will burn. Ensure the outlet end is pulled out in a way so it doesn't get covered. Using protective gloves, spray the foam insulation all over the lights and sticks so that everything is fully covered, except for the edges where the stick ends poke out. Spray in a random pattern. You don't want this to look too perfect. Allow the foam to fully expand and harden. This will take a few hours. If any lights are still poking out after the spray is fully expanded, spray more foam until they are covered. Allow to fully expand and harden again. Once dried, use the spray paint to lightly coat the surface. First, form the chicken wire into your desired shape. I want to make it look like slime is running down some steps, so I'm bending the wire to fit each angle. Place the formed chicken wire over a drop cloth and lay the green string lights so they cover the surface. Ensure the outlet is pulled out and away from the wire. Using protective gloves, spray the foam insulation all over the wire and the lights so that everything is fully covered. Spray in a random pattern so the foam looks like oozing slime. Once dried, use the fluorescent green spray paint to lightly coat the surface. After the paint has dried, set your finished slime, or glowing fire, onto the spot where you want to display it, and place additional props around it as needed. They'll both look creepy during the day and glow at night. And after you're done decorating, they can be stored away, mess-free, and used again and again.